Mind your decisions, I'm Presh Tollwalker. Start with a square. Inscribe a circle in this square and shade the region between the circle and the square in blue. For the next step, inscribe a square inside of this circle and again inscribe a circle inside of this square. Once again in this step, shade the region between the circle and the square in blue. Now repeat this process indefinitely. The question is if we repeat this infinitely many times, if the first square has a side length equal to 1, what is the total sum of all the areas that are shaded in blue? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. We will first go over the sum of a geometric series, and then we will solve the problem. Let's get started with the sum of a geometric series. Suppose we have a geometric series where the first term is equal to a, and we have a common ratio equal to r. Let's first consider the finite sum where the final term is a multiplied by r to the power of k. Let's find a formula for this sum. We will first consider a copy of this sum. Now let's multiply each term in this sum by the constant r. Let's distribute this through to each term. Now let's line up the powers of r. Furthermore, just to make this a little bit easier to see, let's make the term a multiplied by r to the power of 3. Let's just group that and then let's pull out a multiplied by r to the power of k. Let's now subtract the second equation from the first. The result on the left hand side will be sk minus r multiplied by sk. On the right hand side we have some interesting cancellations. a r will cancel, then a r squared will cancel, and so on. All of these terms in the middle will cancel. This is reminiscent of a telescope that retracts upon itself and only the beginning and end survive. For this reason, it's called a telescoping sum. So the result on the right hand side will be equal to the first term a minus the last term a multiplied by r to the power of k plus 1. We can further simplify this. Let's factor out sk and then we will divide both sides of this equation by 1 minus r. This is the formula for the sum of a geometric series up to a finite term. What if we wanted an infinite geometric series? Well, let's suppose the common ratio has an absolute value that's less than 1. In this case, the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of r to the power of k plus 1 will be equal to 0. So we take the limit as k goes to infinity of this sum, we'll take the limit as k goes to infinity of the formula for the sum. Now we know that this term will go to zero, so it will vanish. Thus we are left that the limit is equal to a divided by one minus r. It's equal to the first term divided by one minus the common ratio. So let's use this formula to solve the problem. Let's get a little bit of notation. Let's suppose the first area will be equal to b1, the second area will be equal to b2, and so on. Let's calculate b1. The side of the square is equal to 1, which means the diameter of the circle is equal to 1. Thus, the radius of the circle is equal to 0.5. We can thus calculate b1, and it will be equal to the area of the square minus the area of the circle. So it'll be equal to 1 squared, which is equal to 1, minus pi multiplied by 0.5 squared. This simplifies to be 1 minus pi over 4. Now let's calculate the next area. The diameter of this circle is equal to 1. When we inscribe a square into it, then its diagonal will exactly be a diameter of the previous circle. 
So the diagonal of this square is equal to 1. We can then calculate the side length of the square because we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. So if the hypotenuse of the square is equal to 1, one of the legs will be equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2. From here, we know that the side of the square is 1 divided by the square root of 2, which means the diameter of this circle is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 2, which means the radius is exactly half of that. So we can calculate B2. It'll be equal to the area of the square minus the area of the circle. We do some simplification, and we get that B2 is equal to 1 half minus pi over 8. From here, let's compare B1 and B2. Notice that B2 is exactly equal to half of B1. So B2 over B1 is equal to 1 half. By very similar calculation, we can show that each subsequent blue area is exactly 1 half of the previous blue area. In other words, BK plus 1 divided by BK is equal to 1 half. So we have a common ratio of 1 half between the areas. Let's now get to an answer. We want to calculate the infinite sum B1 plus B2 plus B3 and so on. The first term will be equal to B1, and the common ratio will be equal to 1 half. So we can use the formula for the sum of a geometric series, and it'll be equal to a divided by 1 minus the common ratio. a is equal to b1, and the common ratio is equal to 1 half. So we'll do some simplification here. This will be equal to b1 divided by 1 half, which will be equal to 2 times b1. Then we know that b1 is equal to 1 minus pi over 4. So this will be equal to 2 minus pi over 2. And that's the answer. The sum of all of these blue areas is equal to 2 minus pi over 2. What a beautiful answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.